Hey YouTube, Jeremy Wright here with a kind of a weird tank talk, I guess. It's a, it's a surprise to me. This is totally ad lib. Excuse me, I belched. That was ad lib also. Um, so what is this about? For one, I was given some gup gups back. So this is one of my guppy colonies, which was going to be uh, going like in that little tank over there that my son and I set up. That was actually a 10 gallon tank from my childhood that used to reside at my grandmother's home. Now, yeah, clearly this is just a mess on my desk, right? So my desk is just a mess. Oh, actually another thing. This little guy is not my kitty. I am um, blah, 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 fostering this kitty for a little while, while um, his sister is getting fixed. He's going to be fixed. And I, I'm just totally against that stuff. I call that hacking up animals. But yeah, that's that's Mowgli, and he's going to be um, going to the vet soon. But he was staying with his sister in the same apartment belonging to a friend of mine. And yeah, they they're... A uh, human companion didn't want them to uh, reproduce with each other, given that they are related. So back to tank talking. What's up with this? So my two convicts, my convict pair that was staying in this 40-gallon, have spawned. And I didn't think, I thought I had two of the same sex. So let's go back down here. Sorry for the reflections. But I'm going to zoom. Hang tight. See that, the fishy center screen? That's just one of them. But I'm super surprised that this happened and I wouldn't have put guppies in with a spawning pair if I knew that they were a spawning pair. Uh, I thought, I mean, gosh, whatever. So, yeah, I guess they just previously these two just weren't, I mean, they weren't a, as dominant as some of the other couples when they were in a 29-gallon tank in the other room. It's, that's my son's tank. We call it Tank B. This is Tank F, Foxtrot, I believe. And, um, yeah, I'm not in tank maintenance mode, so for some reason I forget, like, what tank is what. But I brought these Gup Gups in here. Because they came from, you can look back in one of my videos just from a few days ago from last weekend, last Friday, today's Wednesday. Last Friday, I got this tank back and it came, or sorry, I got that tank right there back. And in it were some plants. And I, so let's, let's just look down in here. So the wad of Java moss was in that tank. The um, Ovilada was in that tank. The, let's see, Anubius was in that tank. And the Gup Gups were in that tank. And some of these guppies were just pretty fantastic and I need to move a few of them. One of them's sick and I need to pull her out if I can catch her. Ah, there she is. So mama with the spot on her head, yeah. I'm gonna be trying to catch her and pull her out because, well, that looks like ick to me. And this tank is not heated, which means I cannot raise the temperature artificially in this tank. But by my little digital thermometer, thermometer, um, temperature watcher, Let's see. Um, I'm going to have a difficult time actually seeing this, so I have to take my hat off. It's 76 degrees on that. I had to block the light. Um, yeah. This tank's just, right now, it's just overflow space. It's overflow space with dirty glass, so water spots on the glass. And one sick guppy that I am just going to say needs to come out because I'm not going to treat this tank for ick, especially not with fry in it. That would probably just kill them. And for those of you who don't know, medicating tanks 
is kind of like giving humans chemotherapy. You're poisoning the tank just a little bit, trying to kill some things without killing others. So much like we give humans chemotherapy, trying to kill cancer cells without killing other cells. Um, yeah, it's kind of what happens when we do uh, antibiotics or ick treatment or treatment for parasites it's still poison and i don't like using poison in planted tanks you've probably heard me say that many times but at this point tank f tank foxtrot is kind of full it's a happy healthy environment but it's not very pleasant to look at right now and that's just what it is so yeah Let's go back and look at Convict Fry, because they're pleasant to look at, even though they're clear little things, and we've got reflection problems. So again, I didn't think this was a breeding pair, and I didn't look at them very cl I mean, I did. I looked at them pretty closely for a while, but they just didn't color up, and I was just like, eh, oh well. I guess I've got two females or something, and I just didn't really pay attention. So... Guess how I found out that this was a breeding pair? Haha, <laughs> when they bred. And that's generally not the most advisable way to do fish keeping, but that's how I was doing it in this particular case. And it is what it is. So, um, yeah, I'll probably be unloading some convicts to a local fish store fairly shortly and just seeing what happens. So the old saying is, you know, they breed like convicts because that's uh, kind of what happens. That's a, that's a multi-layered joke. If you don't know what I mean, you will probably know what I mean by thinking about it just a little bit. Um, they got their name for a reason. And that reason actually turns out to be a, a bit funnier than it may have been originally intended. So looking down through here, this is a cool filter sand base. I actually just plopped some plants down in here that did have soil on their roots. So we see some dirt, some mulm that's been in this tank. And also the convicts were doing some digging when they were spawning, but meh. That's okay. For the most part, the guppies are staying up high. I'm gonna do a zoom out real quick. Let's see what happens. For the most part, the guppies are staying up high in the tank. The convicts are staying down low. And that was sort of my intention. Uh, there's just a big glob of plant matter, guppy grass, java moss, anubias, and some other things that are just hanging out in the tank, but it makes an effective barrier, keeping the guppies up high in the tank, the convicts down low, and I have no doubt that the convicts will be kind of rude to the guppies, but I also have no doubt that the guppies would try and eat convict fry if they were cruising around the bottom of the tank. And I don't want that to happen. I'm also not entirely sure what sort of plant matter I put in here. It's a cute little Anubius. I'm not sure what type it is. But when I gave Amanda that 37 gallon tank a year ago, a little over a year ago, it had many types of Anubius in it. She gave it back to me um, only because it sprang a leak. Otherwise she was enjoying it, I do believe. And was able to show me how the tank had evolved and um, beautiful root clusters that we were seeing from the bottom of the tank. She had it on a shelf that was sort of open. And when we looked, well, we kind of pulled the, the previous tank out. And I'm talking again about this 37 gallon. And hey, Mowgli. Um, when we pulled that tank out, we were able to see this plant had just an amazing root cluster. So 
We're both pretty sure it was going to struggle a little bit when it was uprooted and then replanted. But after a couple of months of growing here, as long as the convicts don't have their way, and I may, I may end up moving that pair of convicts over to this tank. And isn't that just a hideous little um, combination of a black hood on top of a tan rim tank? But let me get, let me tell you about this. So my son and I just built this tank, uh, or rebuilt this tank, and just a couple of days ago, he wanted to put um, some marine seashells in there. So you know, who am I to say no to my kid? So not decorated as I would have done, but I think I'm going to put these convicts in here. And this was when I was younger. I mentioned this tank, this 10 gallon tank with the tan rim lived at my grandmother's house. And this tank was one that we had African cichlids in, small African cichlids. And it was kind of fun. So we kept those going for years at her place. She was one of the people who got me into aquariums and that was well over 30 years ago. I'm 40 now. And that was definitely over 30 years ago. We also have an earthling. Earth Kitty. That's a kitty that my son named. If you haven't seen Earth Kitty videos, feel free to glance elsewhere on the channel and you will likely find an Earth Kitty video. It's, um, there is snow outside in Little Rock, Arkansas right now. I think much of the southeast U.S. is covered in snow right now and that's just not normal. So we had a very strange week here. I really enjoyed my kiddos being here and... I mean, there's not much more to say. We just had a blast together. And we got to watch aquariums, play in aquariums, set up one tank together. And I'll probably be furthering that soon. And I just really enjoy looking. It's hard to tell with this color light, the rather yellow sand and the, the reflection of the light that's coming up from the bottom, so yellow. It's hard to see, but these are polar blue convict cichlids. And yeah, they just have a very green look, but their finage has a really pretty blue coloration to it, as well as their body. But when their fins get in the light just right, it's very pretty. And these fish are such good parents. That's something that I really like about them. That's one of the things that I do really like about convict cichlids and, and some cichlids just in general is that they're just such good parents. And yeah, so I think it's about time to sign off now. We're at the 13 minute mark and I've got places to be, things to do, stuff to find out. And uh, this was apparently one of those things that I needed to find out. It looks like they just, these little fishies, uh, let me zoom in again. These little fish just hatched, like within the last day or two, I would think. Little bitty things. They're free swimming now, so I don't know, maybe we're on day three or four. But, gosh, I just didn't know. I didn't know. But I'm glad that they're doing well, that they're staying healthy, that the guppies are not eating them, and unfortunately, I don't see any baby gup gups, so let's look up a bit and see if we can find any baby gup gups. I'm going to say that's a hard no, but before I do anything further, she's going to come out of this tank, and that's just, that's a sick fishy. So. Let's see what can happen. I've got a, a net right over here. I don't want to catch too many fishies. I don't want to catch that fishy. Just that fishy. Just that fishy. Just that fishy right on there. Now she's gonna get caught. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -wa. That's how you catch fishies. So she's sick. So I'm gonna move her over to a tank that's the same temp, but it's not heated. And now that tank probably will just be what it is. And maybe there'll be some baby gup gups that get in there. Otherwise, I think I need to order a heater, both for this tank 
and for this tank because I'm aware now that there's potentially ick in both of them. So why over here? Because these fish were transported in the cold. It was super cold and I was huddling their container. I actually had it inside my fur coat, my parka. And man, one of them got sick. So I don't think it was uh, Amanda's fault at all. I think they just got cold and she was expressing, you know, that's, that's a common thing when, when fish get cold. So to get rid of ick, you don't have to put meds in. Just raise the temp up to like 86, 87 degrees. That's it. Oh, dude's got some fin problems. Um, a couple of those dudes have fin problems. That's okay. Those are old fishies. Those are both over a year old. Because I remember, uh, you know, even though I breed and have like thousands of guppies, I remember them. I remember almost all of them. And some of them I don't really recognize. Like, like this guy? I don't know him. He's pretty young. I don't know you. I don't know you either. But I know who your parents were. This one. That's an indie. Half Endler, half Guppy. Indie. And mm, probably have to remove that one also. Indies are awesome, though. They're just super hard to catch. I probably won't be able to catch that fish. Unless I trick it. So, anyway, I digress. This video's gone on for a while. I'm sorry I took up 17 minutes of your time. Thank you for hanging with me. Love you guys. If you enjoy watching fishies and seeing things unfurl, give me a like, subscribe, check it out, leave a comment, and I would love to interact with you. Hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy the week. Enjoy wintertime. Sayonara.